so now we're going to go through the output that we generated from performing the ordinal regression in the previous video. Um, the first table you get back is this case processing summary, which basically just tells us the proportion of, of cases within each category. And um, probably most useful is to look at uh, for the outcome variable itself, age 14 maths tier. So this is the percentage of students which were entered into each of these four uh, maths tiers. And you can see that actually the highest maths tier was the least popular at 17.1%. And the most popular one was tier uh, four to six. But actually all four are quite well represented. There's a good proportion of the students in each. Um, we've also got information about the ethnic group here. And this sort of justifies our decision to use white British as the uh, the reference group uh, for this particular variable um, because you can see that two-thirds of the students are actually within this category so it was worth doing that recoding we did to create the ethnic two variable which I mentioned in the in the previous video okay so the next table in our output is the model fitting information which we're essentially looking at the question here does our model uh, does the model improve our ability to predict the outcome? So we're looking at minus two log likelihoods. If you remember, that's basically the the measure of error in the model. So the measure of um, whether w what our actual outcome is compared to the probability that a model predicts the outcome would be. Um, so we're, we're looking to see if there's a statistically significant improvement, I guess, between if we had the we're using just the intercept of the model to to predict um, which category a person falls in um, so basically just the, the proportions as, as a probability versus actually including all of our expansion variables in the model so we're hoping that this comes out statistically significant which it has done luckily which suggests that actually by in, in, we are actually improving our model by including these uh, expansion variables within it um, the next table is the goodness of fit table. Now this is less positive because the question here is are observed data consistent with the model we fitted to it? Um, and the null hypothesis is that the model is a good fit. So if this is statistically significant, it's suggesting that actually the, the, the data doesn't fit the model that well. And as we can see, we have got a statistically significant um, Pearson sky square there. Um, it's important to consider this, but we also have to be very careful because it's it's a very sensitive test to um, missing cells within the chi-square analysis, so within the sort of cross-tabulation which forms the basis of a chi-square. And also it's very sensitive to large sample size, and we have over 15,000 um, cases in this particular data set. So although it does look like the data, the model isn't fitting the data that well, um, I think we've got enough information here to suggest that we're actually improving the outcome. Um, sorry, we're pro improving um, how well we're predicting the outcome with the model fitting information to suggest that actually we're, we're still okay with this particular type of model. So the next thing we get is the Suedo R-square, which if you remember from logistic regression is sort of the, the version of the R-square that we use when, when models aren't using continuous outcome variable. So the Nagelkirke R-square, which I think I'm pronouncing rightly, is 0.124, which suggests that 12.4% of the variance in our outcome is explained by our explanatory variables. Um, so of course this isn't huge, that's still a, you know, a, a much greater proportion yet to be explained, but it's still a substantial amount of the variance explained, so it still is again suggesting that there's some value to our model. And I'll come back to the parameter estimates because I just quickly want to talk about the test of parallel lines, which is of course testing our proportional odds assumption. Now I won't again won't go into this in a great deal of detail because it's uh, it's better explained on the website when you can sort of read through it slowly. But it's basically testing the null hypothesis. Uh, this test of parallel lines is testing the null hypothesis that um, the odds for each explanatory variable are consistent across different thresholds of the outcome variable. So the odds for each um, uh, the odds for each explanatory variable are the same whether we're going up from tier three to five to tier four to six, or between uh, the the odds of being in tier four to six to five to seven, and and so on. Um, and it's tested the null the null hypothesis is is that they are. Uh, 
um, consistent. So if we get a statistically significant te uh, result, which again we have, that suggests that the odds are different between these different thresholds. So obviously that, that's a problem for us, but again, as we explain in more detail on the website, this test of parallel lines is notoriously conservative. Um, so often it's, it's very, very easy to um, dismiss your ordinal regression model because there are small differences in the odds where in fact the ordinal regression model would be the best way to, to actually look at that data. Um, so we recommend that you actually use multiple logistic uh, regressions to, to explore the odds as well as the ordinal regression just to see whether the difference in the odds is indeed substantial. So we could perform multiple logistic regressions say between tier 3 and 5 so you split your, your outcome variable so if they're in tier 3 to 5 versus if they're in any of the other tiers if they're in tier 3, 5 or 4 to 6 versus 5 to 7, 6 to 8 and you know if they're in any of these three earlier tiers versus the top tier so we can then by, do, by doing that and looking at the odds ratios that we actually get for each explanatory variable we could see whether or not this test is being um, overly conservative so the final table we need to discuss is the parameter estimates table, which is probably the most important table actually because it tells you about the sort of individual influence of each of your explanatory variables within the context of the model. So these thresholds are actually um, not terribly important when we come to interpreting the output, but they're basically, uh, the, 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 by the thresholds, if you remember when I was speaking about the proportional odds assumption I mentioned thresholds, they're basically where we shift between one level in the outcome variable and, and and another. So for the uh, K3 matter equals zero, it's the change between tier three to five and any of the other tiers. For K3 matter equals one, it's the shift between going up from um, including these two tiers of examination and the other two, uh, tiers five to seven and tiers, uh, tier six to eight. Um, and the final one is of course comparing tier three to five, tier four to six, tier five to seven with tier six to eight. Um, this is you find that these estimate values are useful if you're trying to use the model to predict um, an individual case but actually most of the time it, it's not terribly important to interpret those what is important to interpret are the individual explanatory variables so we have our estimate column here which actually doesn't represent the odds but represents the log odds so this is why sort of presenting this in the video is not going to be terribly easy because we'd need to take the exponent of these values in order to get the odds and then once we've got the odds obviously that's a, a better way of interpreting the impact of our individual explanatory variables. So to, to quickly run through these as before you need to see whether each variable is statistically significant. So if you recall we entered SEC2 as a covariate as a continuous variable and it is a statistically significant um, predictor of the outcome um, this point two seven eight. If we were comparing the lowest, uh, the least affluent SEC group to the most affluent, we'd actually times this by seven, and then take the exponent to get the odds ratio. Um, so, so that would be um, because we've got obviously there's we're using it continuously, and there's actually seven categories between the lowest and the, the highest SEC group. Um, for ethnicity and gender, we, they're nominal variables. So actually, we'll just be comparing them, the odds for each um, between the baseline category and each uh, dummy variable. So as you can see, some of these actually aren't statistically significant. But I think ethnic two is Indian and ethnic three is Pakistani. And, but in both cases, there is a statistically significant uh, difference. Um, so that this would be between white British and each of those um, individual ethnic dummy variables. And if you recall, uh, zero is male and one is female for the gender variable. So we've shifted our baseline again to take the last category of female. So this is the comparison between um, females and males. So it's the change in odds between females and males, the odds ratio. Okay, now the, the estimate, of course, is, is actually looking at the odds of, uh, of, change, um, of change of one level within our ordinal outcome. Now, if you remember, the odds are meant, to, because of the assumption of proportional odds, the odds are meant to be the same no matter which levels in the ordinal outcome you're going to. So this is just, a this is just the odds of going up 
one level. Okay, so like I said, there's not sort of a lot of point in me going into it in great depth because I think the website does a better job and it shows you how to take the exponent and how to actually um, make predictions for individual cases. But I think that sort of concludes what we can say based on the output. And as you can see, it's not sort of as user friendly as it was for, for logistic regression, but all the information to interpret the model is still there and it's still. Um, once you know how, it's still quite easy to interpret and, and get the results instantly. Thank you very much.